G'day guys, Thomas here and welcome to another Bathy Maps tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about um, an overview of wonky holes and also how Bathy Maps can be used to narrow down a search area uh, to find wonky holes. So what we'll cover today, we'll cover what wonky holes are, uh, why and how they form, where they form, and also, as I just said, uh, how Bathy Maps can help you find them. So what are wonky holes? So according to scientific literature, wonky holes are submarine groundwater discharges from paleo channels. So in common terms, it's groundwater that's seeping out of the seabed uh, from ancient rivers uh, that used to flow through the continental shelf but are now uh, flooded with the ocean. Now this is a really good diagram that I've um, pulled out of some literature um, and it shows a bath bathymetric model of um, a series of wonky holes. Now as you can see here, the, the wonky holes are, are the dark blue. Um, the paleo channel is the, is the greener, deeper area and around the sides is, is the seabed. Um, the red and the yellow is shallower. Um, the green is deeper and the blue is, is even deeper. And as you can see here, the wonky holes form in clusters along the paleo channels. And all this is is groundwater flowing through this ancient riverbed, getting to a point where the sediment is thin enough and the groundwater is just flowing out of these, out of the uh, paleo channel which forms these holes as the water flows out into the ocean. So as I said before, wonky holes are a discharge of groundwater um, from the seabed um, and they occur within paleo channels. So this top diagram here is, um, is a seismic survey. Um, or on a cross section of a paleo channel and a wonky hole. So as you can see here, the paleo channel, which is marked by a P, you can see that this is uh, a cross section of basically an old riverbed. So the darker area here is, is harder substrate that the ancient riverbed would have carved into uh, the ground when it was flowing, forming this riverbed. And over time, it was once it was flooded, it was filled with sediment. So you can see the soft sediment sitting on top of the paleo channel and the hard um, bedrock that the paleo channel sits in. And then water flows through these paleo channels in this sort of area here, this area here. And then it, it expresses out of the seabed, which is here, and forms these wonky holes, which is that little hole there, which is marked by WH, wonky hole. Now the diagram below it is an actual schematic diagram of a wonky hole that was um, surveyed by divers um, in this study. And as you can see, it's four meters deep, uh, 10 meters wide. And you can see that there's the tunnels on the left and right, which is the area or the hole where the groundwater um, actually flows from underground out into the sea. So why and how do wonky holes form? So this diagram is a conceptual model of the coast of the Great Barrier Reef 15,000 years ago. Now 15,000 years ago the world was in an ice age which caused the ice caps uh, in the Arctic and Antarctic to increase in size, um, freezing seawater and therefore reducing the sea levels. And the sea, the sea levels were a lot lower than what they are now. Um, and therefore the shoreline was actually out near the continental shelf. So today the shoreline is actually up here at the sort of base of the um, mountains here in this diagram. But 15,000 years ago, it was out below the continental shelf. And as a result, the area that is currently the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon um, and the 
the inner and middle uh, lagoon was a coastal plain that was made up of a series of you know, me meandering rivers and lakes and swamps. And these ancient rivers is what um, the Paleo channels are today. So this next diagram shows um, scenario around six and a half thousand between fifteen thousand and six and a half thousand years ago. So after the ice age broke and the world started increasing in temperature, the ice caps melted and the sea levels started rising. Now, as you can see in the previous diagram, the sea level was down here below the continental shelf, but now it's moved forward and is moving up through the coastal plain. The continental shelf has now been flooded uh, with rising sea levels. And the coastal plain is uh, basically up next in terms of um, the rising sea levels will, will eventually flood this coastal plain and it will reach its existing shoreline destination, which is up here um, below the mountains. And now this is a, um, a diagram of the current sea level, uh, which exists between six and a half thousand years ago to about now. So once the world heated up to around its current average temperature, the ice caps had melted a lot from 15,000 years ago. The sea levels had risen a lot and therefore the, uh, the shoreline had moved up and flooded the coastal plain. And whilst the, the coastal plain had flooded, these ancient rivers um, never stopped flowing. So over time, sediments formed uh, over the ancient rivers, uh, covering them, but the water still flowed through these rivers along the high, through the highlands, and then instead of flowing on the surface as they previously as they previously did, they now flow as groundwater underground. Now the way that uh, sediment deposition works is that the finer muddy sediments make their way uh, closer to shore. And they're, and they're deposited closer to the shore. Whereas the, uh, the more coarse uh, sand and rubble um, drops out earlier and it ends up being deposited further out. And so you have a situation where it's muddier closer to shore and sandier and gravelier further out. And so what formed was something called the sediment wedge. Um, which is seen here as the, the yellow area. Now the sediment wedge plays an important role um, in terms of um, the location and um, the reason why wonky holes form. So you can see in this diagram, this is essentially the coastal, the existing coastal plain. You can see a river running out here and a tidal flat. The ocean starts from here on, from the tidal flat on, and you can see the embayment floor is consistent of a Holocene mud prism. Now, don't worry about all these technical terms. This wedgy looking feature here is called the sediment wedge. And that's all those muddy sediments that were deposited over time close to shore. Now, if you look, look down here, you can see the fluvial channels, just another name for paleo channels. You can see that they still existed. Uh, they still exist underground here. And now, closer to shore, they're buried by this sediment wedge and groundwater isn't able to escape from these paleo channels. But once the sediment wedge thins, well, as you get a certain distance from land, um, these fluvial channels or paleo channels, um, there's not much sitting on top of them. And if it's fine, sedi uh, fine sands or um, sediment, then the groundwater in the paleo channel suddenly has a, a chance to escape. And so you'll find that wonky holes only form once the sediment wedge thins to a, uh, to a small enough size that the paleo channels, the groundwater in the paleo channels can burst through. Uh, and this is really important. So basically the sediment wedge thins at approximately the 20 meter depth contour. Um, that can be various 
uh, distances from the shore, but generally it's around the 20 metre depth contour of the sediment th um, wedge thins. Uh, and then this is, is the first opportunity that Paleo Channel's sediments uh, are exposed and groundwater is able to escape from the Paleo Channel, which forms the wonky hole. So just some examples of um, Paleo Channels on our Bathy maps. Here is an example of the Daintree Paleo Channel, which you can see through here. So you can see the existing Daintree River. Now, during lower sea levels, the Daintree River would have come and flowed through here around Snapper Island and then out towards the mid shelf area of the lagoon. This would have been the coastal plain and the river would have flowed through here. And you can easily see that uh, using the bathymetry data and our paleo maps layer, which we have developed specifically for identifying or helping to identify paleo channels. So here's another example uh, in central Queensland. So you can see two paleo channels here. One's more defined than the other. So you can see this is an old paleo channel would have run through here, would have meandered through this coastal plain. These would have been hills and mountains, these islands. And it would have come from, come from these uh, land-based river sources here into this coastal plain and would have meandered through this landscape out towards the continental shelf. And now the second example here is a much more defined um, paleo channel. You can see here, it would, it's carved all the way through this landscape here. And, and you can see from the bathymetry data that it clearly would have run this line. And the most defined paleo channel that exists in the Great Barrier of Catchment is the mighty Fitzroy River. Now this paleo channel you can see running all the way out to pretty much the continental shelf. But the Fitzroy River is here, runs through. You can still see it would have run through here, straight through, and then joined up and run through the coastal plain. And this is a very, the most well-defined paleo channel in the Great Barrier Reef area. So where do wonky holes form? So it's pretty straightforward based on all the scientific facts that I just explained to you uh, previously. They'll form along paleo channels, which uh, we can clearly see here in Daintree River. They'll form in between, generally in between the 20 meter and 30 meter depth contours in the inter, within the inner continental shelf. So how can Bathy Maps Premium help you find wonky holes? Well, Bathy Maps Premium users uh, have access to our four step strategy uh, tutorial video called narrowing down a search area for wonky holes. Uh, and what the tutorial video does is provides a really clear strategy for our premium users to follow, to use the Paleo Maps and all our other copyright data in Bathy Maps Premium to narrow down a search area for wonky holes. So to take a huge area, a vast area in the inner shelf um, and narrow it down to a really specific smaller area uh, that provides a really achievable search area to help you find wonky holes and then find fish faster. So if you want to get access to our four step tutorial video for narrowing down search areas, as well as access to our paleo maps and copyright data uh, to premium users, sign up to Bathy Maps Premium by going to our homepage, bathymaps.com.au and selecting subscribe now and uh, paying the, uh, the fee, the one year subscription uh, for Bathy Maps Premium. So that's it guys for our Wonky Hole overview, overview video. Um, if you want to know anything else about Bathy Maps or Bathy Maps Premium, go to our website at bathymaps.com.au or our Facebook page or Instagram page. Um, email us at thomas at bathymaps.com.au or send us a message on any of our socials. Uh, we'll be happy to provide you any more information or answer any of your questions.